The BBC proms have been a fixture of our summer season since Henry Wood first conceived the unique music festival back in 1927. And it has never been too far from controversy, whether it be so-called colonial lyrics, or anti-Brexit protesters on its famous last night. Now there's a new threat, Just Stop Oil protesters, who struck this week at Wimbledon, and the musically closer to home Glyndebourne Festival Opera. But prom's Queen Katie Durham is striking a defiant note. We'll be prepared I'm sure, she said from the office of Radio 3's controller. They're allowed to make their point but I'm sure there will be all sorts of plans afoot to make sure the spirit of the occasion isn't spoiled. Gary Lineker denies being BBC host paying teen for explicit photos, latest, the world's greatest music festival kicks off this Friday with 72 concerts taking place over the next eight weeks. Concerts will be staged at London's Royal Albert Hall, and in all four nations of the UK. Katie, 53, presents for both Radio 3, and BBC TV, which she shares with fellow journalist Clive Myrie. And it's a role she relishes. But ask if a protest would ruin the last night of the proms, the mum of two replied, I don't think it would. People would give them some respect and then move on. But I'm not going to have a discussion about whether I agree with their views. As always there has to be good security at a big event like this. The last night will be held on September 9th and will feature British cellist Sheku Kane Mason and Norwegian soprano Lisa Davidson. What if protesters turned up in your Radio 3 presentation box? Katie laughed, they would get a prize for that. But we'll have to deal with anything that comes up. It's the delight of live broadcasting. Then there are the flags. Some are not happy about the many European Union flags on show, post-Brexit. You know as somebody who has been associated with the last night for the last 14 years or so, this comes up every year, said the former ITV newsreader. And every year I look carefully around and depending on who the soloists are, we have their national flags, many European flags, and a lot of Union Jacks. But it's much more benign than people think, more light-hearted. Nothing wrong with having a debate, about these things, but I just want people to concentrate on the music and have a great time. That's the main thing. In that spirit, proms organizers have planned their very first Geordie prom with a concert in Gateshead. It's part of a weekend festival in collaboration with the Royal Northern Symphonia, based at Sage in the Northeast Town, and featuring Mercury Prize-nominated self-esteem. How would she pitch a prom to a Newcastle football fan who's more accustomed to singing in the stands than an evening with Sibelius? Katie said, yes, there are doors to walk through which might be more familiar even if you're not into classical music. But I'd also say just give it a whirl anyway, because actually, music is music and you know, you listen to a beautiful piece of Mozart, or a Brahms symphony, which is going to be on its sage gate's head, and I reckon there's a fair chance you'll be taken somewhere by that. The in-tune presenter added, music is all around us. But I think if you don't know much about Brahms, you never know, it might be something that just tickles your fancy because it stirs you emotionally. It might spark a memory of something you might have heard as a kid, and I think the beautiful thing about the Brahms is you don't have to pay a vast quantity of cash to go to one. Ticket prices do appear to be reasonable value for money. Promenaders, who stand in front of the stage at the Royal Albert Hall, pay only £8, about the price of an expensive pint of beer in a London pub. 
this has only increased from £7.12, say BBC sources, less than inflation. I do think if it's a wet Tuesday, and you're in the area, give it a go, said Katie. Obviously, we all have to make choices and I think that the cost of living crisis is a very real issue. But I also think the proms represent enormously good value for a night out at a concert or a night of entertainment. As I say, if you don't mind standing or sitting on the floor in the gallery, and you've got 8 quid, try it. I don't even think you can go to the cinema for that. Katie divides her time between proms hosting slots for television and Radio 3. She revealed her presentation box is open to the auditorium, and only allows her a few creature comforts. She said, it's brilliantly Heath Robinson. It's kind of a converted loggia box. There's a table, a couple of microphones because often we have a guest to discuss things in the interval. Add a pair of headphones, a laptop, a couple of squeaky chairs, and there's room for another guest normally, so you can bring a plus one. But they can't clap too loudly, it's open to the hall, not behind glass or anything. And she added, oh, and a bag of Maltesers, and a cup of tea. Nothing stronger? A flask? She joked. No, but the danger zone is going to be when I'm doing a late night prom and it's a jazz one and then, you know, it would be rude not to have a glass of wine. The nation's reigning prom queen deserves nothing less.